Well, let's go ahead and start with a, well, let's ask a word of wisdom from our Father in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Let's go to the book of Isaiah in, in chapter 21 and see if God's word says anything about Iran. Well, if, uh, you know, if you, if you know, if you know Bible prophecy, you know, Persia is Iran, media includes Iran, and even uh, Elam. So we're going to read some scriptures concerning Elam, which is uh, present-day Iran, okay? Isaiah, let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 21, and verse 1. It says, The burden of the desert of the sea, as whirlwinds, that's the word, sufa, which means hurricanes. And you know, in, uh, this year, 2017, has been one of the worst years, or if not the worst year, of, for hurricanes. And unprecedented hurricanes. It says, As whirlwinds or hurricanes, and the south pass through, so it cometh from the desert from a terrible land. So these hurricanes should remind us of God's wrath and also the coming of Satan as the Antichrist. Verse 8, verse 2 says, A grievous vision is declared unto me, the treacherous dealer. There we see the word deal. The word treasures deal, deal, dealer means de, deal deceitfully, you know, and it also, it also means to act covertly, but there we see the word deal, dealeth treacherously, and the spoiler spoileth, that's the word shadad in the Hebrew, means the ravager, the spoiler, the destroyer, that is Satan as the Antichrist. In other words, is this Iran is this Iran deal going to lead up to or bring about, you know, initiate the coming of the Antichrist? It says, "Go up, Elam, O Elam, O Iran, besiege." And so there we see the word deal, and we see the word Elam, which is Iran. So we see that deal and Iran, and the word besiege. The word besiege. In the Hebrew is the word sur, which means uh, to confine. You know, and the word confine means uh, to restrict or to, to keep someone or something within certain limits or restrictions. So there we see the word deal, we see the word Iran, and we also see the word restrictions. You know, and uh, of course that Iran deal, that's what it is. It, uh, it lists restrictions on Iran. And as you know, President Trump wants more sanctions on Iran, more restrictions. And it says, O media, it says, all the signs thereof have I made to see. Of course, media is, was northwestern Iran and Elam was southwestern Iran. And verse 3 says, it says, all I signs thereof I have I made to see. Verse 3, therefore are my, are my loins filled with pain. Pains have taken hold upon me as the pains of a woman. That travaileth, I was bowed down at the hearing of it. I was dismayed at the seeing of it. In other words, we're in labor pains. You see, we see this Iran deal, you know, and uh, all these restrictions, you know, uh, lifted up. Uh, we're in labor pains, meaning the, the, the child is coming. And always remember, Braxton Hicks means the false Christ. I mean, Braxton Hicks means that the woman always has false labor before she has true labor. In a way, the false Christ comes first before the true Christ. Always remember that. Verse 4, my heart panicked. Fearfulness. The word fearfulness is terror or like terrorism. And you know, uh, Iran is, according to the president, and uh, to the last presidents, starting with uh, Bush and Obama, you know, the, the, uh, that Iran is the number one sponsor of terrorism. Remember the axis of evil? It says, Afraid of me, the night of my pleasure hath, re hath turned into fear unto me. Verse 5, Prepare the table, watch in the watchtower. We're supposed to be watching what's going on. Eat, drink, arise, you princes, and anoint the shield. For thus hath the Lord said unto me, Go set a watchman, uh, and let him declare what he seeth. Yeah, we need to be watchmen and see what's going on in the world. See this Iran deal. It is a big deal. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah in chapter 25. Jeremiah 25. 
and we'll start with verse 24. It says, and all the kings of Arabia, and all the kings of the mingled people, the word mingled is Arab, the word Arab, which also sounds like the Hebrew word for locust. You know, that's where it starts. But the final stage is, of course, Satan and his army, his locust army. Verse 25, and all the kings, it says, the mingled people of the, that dwell in the desert, verse 25, and all the kings of Zimri, and all the kings of Elam, that's Iran, and all the kings of, of the Medes, again, Iran, and all the kings of the north, far and near, one with another, and all the kingdoms of the world. The word far also means east, like the far east, which could include North Korea, you know, China, and, and all the kingdoms of the world which are upon the face of the earth, and the kings of Shishak, that's code name for Babylon, uh, Jeremiah 51, 41. All the king, uh, and the king of Shishak, and notice one king of Shishak, one king of Babylon, the king of Babylon, the king of confusion is Satan, as the Antichrist, drink after them, verse 27, therefore those shall say, Unto them, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, drink ye and you be drunken and spew and fall and rise no more because of the sword which I will send among you. You know, God's word is a sword. But also remember that Satan will come with his sword there in Revelation chapter 6, which is a sword of deception. Verse 28, and it shall be if they refuse to take the cup of thine hand to drink, then thou shalt say unto them, thus says the Lord of hosts, you shall certainly drink, you know, because you did not want the, to receive the love of the truth, meaning God's word, you rather listen to lies, God will send you a spirit of strong delusion to believe a lie. So it's not like, oh no, you know, when the Antichrist comes, I'm going to cut my head and I'm going to be saved. Or, or when the Antichrist comes, that's when I'm going to repent. No, it's, it, it says right there, you are going to believe. You are going to be drunken with that spirit of slumber, with that spirit of sleep, with a spirit of delusion, because you did not want to receive God's word. Verse 29, For lo, I began to bring evil. Evil is the word ra, and also means spoil. And remember the spoiler, Satan. And the city which is called by my name, it should, that's Jerusalem, which is called by my name, it should be utterly unpunished. Should it, and should it be utterly unpunished? You should not be unpunished, for I will call for a sword upon all the inhabitants of the earth. Notice how it says, all the inhabitants, says the Lord of hosts. So it's not talking about Nebuchadnezzar. Verse 30. Therefore prophesy though against them all these words, and say unto them, The Lord shall roar from on high like a lion, remember? And upon his, inhabit upon his habitation he shall give a shout, as they that tread the grapes, meaning his wrath, and against all inhabitants of the earth. A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth, for the Lord hath a controversy. A, 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 reeve, a reeve in the Hebrew means a contest with the nations. He will plead with all flesh. He will give them that are, are wicked to the sword, says the Lord. And, and verse 32 says, Thus said the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from the nation to nation, and a great whirlwind, a great hurricane, shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. And remember, when uh, the hurricane symbolized God's wrath, and not only God's wrath, but Satan when he comes with his wrath. Look at verse 38 right quick. It says, He hath forsaken his covert as the lion, as the lion, saying as the devil as a lion, as a roar lion, for the land is desolate because the, fierce, the fierceness of the oppressor. Who's the oppressor? That is Satan. And because of his fierce anger. And notice how Satan himself has his own anger, has his wrath. That is Satan's wrath is called the tribulation. Okay, let's go to uh, Jeremiah chapter 49, I think. Jeremiah 49. And let's start verse 34. Uh, I mean... Um, Jeremiah 49, 34. It says, The words of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet against Elam, Iran, in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, saying, verse 30, 35, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam of Iran, 
and the chief of their might. In other words, the bow is what launches the weapon. In other words, God is saying, I will destroy the, your means to launch weapons. The bow. And upon Elam will I bring the four winds upon Iran. I will bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven. You see, Iran, yes, it will last until when Christ comes and finally gets, gets uh, rid of it. And will scatter them toward all the winds. And there shall be no, because the four winds always are symbolic. Uh, and there in Matthew 24, 29, uh, you know, Revelation, uh, he, uh, take his, and uh, it always symbolizes the consummation of this world age. There, uh, Matthew 24 and verse 29 to 31. And upon Elam will I bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven, and I will scatter them toward all the winds, and there shall be no nation whether out the coast of Elam shall not come. For I will cause Elam, meaning Iran, to be dismayed before their enemies. And who are who's our Iran's enemies? We are. We're Iran's enemies. And before them that seek their life, and I will bring evil upon them, even my fierce anger, says the Lord, and I will send a sword after them till I have consumed them. Wow. Why? Maybe for worshiping a false god. Maybe for believing in, in, a, in, a, in, in killing innocent people. And I will set my throne in, the, in, in Elam, in Iran. You see, no more that false god. He's going to be the God. He is the God of all the earth. And will destroy from this the king and the princess, says the Lord. But it shall come to pass in, that, in the latter days. When? In the latter days. So we're talking about the latter days. That I will bring again the captivity of Elam. Meaning the captivity of Iran. Says the Lord. Okay? Praise God. Let's see what God calls Iran. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 32. Let's see what they are. Ezekiel 32. And I'm just going to read verse 24. It says, There is Elam, or Iran, all her multitude round about her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, which are gone down uncircumcised in the, ne the nether parts of the earth, which cause their terror. See, they cause terrorism. You know, God does God lie? <laughs> well, yes, they are the number one sponsor of terrorism. Well, here it says that they do cause terror. In the land of the living, yet have they borne their shame with them that go down to the pit. They're going to join those that go down to the pit. That is uh, Iran's demise. Right? Let's go to, let me read another one here in Daniel chapter, no, yeah, let's go to Daniel chapter 8. I'll read one there. Daniel chapter 8. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, chapter 8, verse 1, In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, after that which appeared unto me at first. Verse 2, And I saw in a vision, and it came to pass when I saw that I was in Shushan. That's a place in Iran. Right now, it's, it's a city called Shush. It's one of the oldest cities in Iran. It still exists. In, that, in, in the palace, which is in the province of Elam in Iran. And I saw in a vision, and I was by the river Ulai. So God, so this vision concerns Iran. Okay? In verse, 30, in verse 3, it says, Then I lifted up my eyes, and saw, and behold, there stood before a river a ram, which had two horns. Of course, horns are symbolic of kings. Uh, you can see that in verse 21 and 22. How, how horns are symbolic of kings. And the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other. And the higher one came up last. You know, and if you remember history, 1979, you know, the Shah of Iran, before 1979, if you would, if you would uh, take a picture of Iran from the 60s and the 70s, when the Shah of Iran ruled, you know, you would think you were in America. You thought it was a one of those, uh, uh, maybe even New York, you won't be able to tell the difference. You know, it was westernized. It, it was a, had a democracy and a, and a education. You know, it strived in, a, in like the United States. You would think you were in the United States. But as you know, 
1979, with uh, with uh, Brzezinski as National Security Advisor of Carter, and of course with the Council of Foreign Affairs with uh, with Kissinger in there too. You know, they brought about a lot of change in the Middle East, starting with the Shah of Iran. You know, uh, they had operatives uh, planted in in, uh, in Iran to cause to cause insight, to cause uproars, and uh, to to uh, make it look like the Shah of Iran was totally against uh, against Muslims and against Islam. So they started calling out for uh, the Atoya Khomeini, and of course. The Shah of Iran left, and the Atoya Khomeini returned back to his land after being in exile for many years, and that's where the that rule, the Islamic, that's where the Islamic Republic of Iran commenced, and ever since has been ruled by Islamic extremism. Uh, of course, Shiite nation, though, and I saw the rap, I saw the rap pushing westward and northward and southward. So that no beast would stand before him, neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand. But he did according to his will and became great. So the ram represented some, uh, a, a nation that was very powerful. At one time, you know, Iran, uh, it used to be a United States number one ally. Wow, wow. And today is number one, <laughs> United States number one enemy. That's crazy, huh? And so, uh, but... You know, in other words, it's talking about a nation that, that was very powerful, that nobody could deliver out of his hand. And according to the, to the prophecy uh, here, I mean, the interpretation in verse 20, the rap which those saw us having two horns are the kings of Media and Persia. And of course, the Shah of Iran counted himself as the last Persian king. And many still do. Okay, in verse, verse 5, And I was considering, behold, a great goat came from the western face of the whole earth. The west on the face of the whole earth. What nation, what superpower comes from the west of the face of the whole earth? What superpower comes from the western hemisphere, the west face of the earth? There's only one. That's the United States. And of course, you know, that back in 1979 when... Jimmy Carter, Brzezinski, and after that, Ronald Reagan. All that's when we started seeing all these uh, changes, because the the foreign policy was followed, even after even after Carter, uh, Brzezinski's foreign policy even still now still exists. They still follow that same policy uh, uh, of replacing regimes. And uh, another thing that I want, I want to add that George Bush. You know, entered where Alec, because here it represented verse twenty one says the rub goat is the king of Grecia, and the great horn is between his eyes is the first king that was Alexander the Great. You know, but where Alexander the Great left off in Afghanistan, that's where George Bush commenced, and that's where we see him starting to bring down kingdoms like that, like Alexander the Great as an empire. You know, subduing kingdoms and replacing kings and putting in so called democracy. See. It says, and I saw him come closer to the ram, and he was moved with color against him. It smote the ram and broke his two horns, and there was no power in the ram to stand before him. But he cast him down to the ground and stamped upon him, and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. In other words, he was a superpower. Therefore, the he goat was very great. When he was strong, the great horn was broken, and for it came four notable ones to the four winds of heaven, as we were reading there, right? First God, just a while ago. You know, in other words, four king, kingdoms will come out of this. You know, four kings will be replaced by the end time he goes. Because this vision, you know, Alexander the Great was only a foreshadow. If we read here, this is for the latter days. This vision is for the latter days. So, Alexander the Great was only a foreshadow of how the end time kingdom, the he goat, the real he goat, uh, will act. You know, and four kingdoms will come out of it. And we see Afghanistan being subdued. Uh, and replaced Iraq being subdued and replaced with another with another president, and uh, and we include Libya in there, you know, because Obama had a great deal to do with that. But let's not include him. You know, what are the other nations that we we're striving with right now? How about Iran, North Korea? That would equal four kingdoms. But then again, do you remember the axis of evil? <laughs> okay, let me just take a, a little time and uh, let me just read. I don't want to take too much long. Let me just read from uh, the Holy Bible. 
you know, the 1611, the, the King James Version, okay? It says right there, 1611 King James Version. So it's not something different, something crazy, okay? This is what came out in 1611, okay? And I'm going to read from 2 Ezra and chapter 15. And uh, let me read some verses here in verse 20. It says, Behold, says the Lord God, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun. And when we read the rising of the sun, well, we think of North Korea, China, Japan, you know, all those, all those uh, nations. From the south, from the east, and the Libyans to turn themselves once against another and repay the things that they have done to them. And you see, all of them are at war with each other. But look at verse 28. Says, this is why we came here. It says, Behold, a horrible vision, a horrible vision. The appearance thereof from the east. Wow. Could this talking be talking about North Korea? It says, where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come. And of course, the nations of the dragons of Arabia, I believe it's ISIS or represents the Islamic extremism, shall come out of many with chariots. And the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon the earth, that all they which hear them may fear and tremble. Verse 30. Also the Carmenians, that's a Iran, that's ancient Iran. The Iranians, raging in wrath, shall go forth as the wild boars of the wood, and with great power they shall come and join battle with them. Wow. <laughs> is that, a, is that a, a credible alliance? Iran, North Korea, and ISIS, could or all the Islamic extremists, could that be a credible alliance? <laughs> According to Donald Trump, you know, they already are colluding together. You know, in verse, uh, President Trump, I mean. And then, then it says, and it says, and then shall the dragons have the upper hand. Wow. Remember their, na their nature, and if they shall turn themselves conspiring together in great power to persecute them, then these shall be, shall be troubled and keep silence through their power and shall flee. And from the land of Assyria shall the enemy besiege them. And who's their enemy? Of course, they have one, all of them share one enemy, or, or actually two, which is the United States and Israel. And consume some of them. And their host shall be fear and dread and strife and among their kings. So what he's saying here, we're going to have upper hand. We're going to beat them. Verse 34. But look what it what initiates. Behold clouds from the east, from the north, unto the south. A very, a very horrible to look upon, full of wrath and a storm. Wow. A giant storm. Think about this, you know, it starts off with, you know, with these kingdoms of the earth, but it uh, mortifies itself into, you know, or it, it really goes back to Satan coming with his locust army from heaven. They shall smite one upon another, and they shall smite down a great multitude of stars. That means angels. Stars are symbolic of angels upon the earth, fallen angels, even their own star, their own God. Their own angel, Satan, and blood shall shall be from the sword unto the belly, and dung of men unto the camel's hole. You know, praise God in Of course, what na what nations use camels for battle? And there shall be great fearfulness and trembling upon the earth, and they that see the wrath shall be afraid, and trembling shall come upon them. And then shall there come great storms from the south, or hurricanes from the south, from the north, and another part from the west. Remember, God's wrath, symbolic of hurricanes, or hurricanes, symbolic of God's wrath. And strong winds shall arise from the east. Again, there's the east. Could it be talking about North Korea or China? And shall open, and the cloud which he raised up in the wrath, and the star stirred to cause fear toward the east and the west, and the wind shall be destroyed. Satan will be destroyed. He will no longer be able to say he's Christ when the true Christ comes. The great and mighty clouds shall be lifted up full of wrath and the star 
that they make all the earth afraid, and them that dwell therein, and they and they shall power out over every high and eminent place, and horrible star, that is Satan, fire and hell and the heaving sword and many waters, and all the field may be full of rivers with the abundance of the great waters, and they shall break down the cities and the wall, mountains and hills, trees of the wood and the grass of the meadows and their corn. And they shall go steadfastly unto Babylon and make her afraid. They, they shall come to her and besiege her, the star, and all wrath shall they power out upon her. Then shall the dust and the smoke go up unto the heaven, and all they that above her shall be well heard. You know, praise God, is the Iran deal the big deal? <laughs> well, according to God's word, yes, praise God, you know. And I hope you enjoyed this video, you know, and uh, until next time, you know, God bless you, and of course, keep dragging.